going through because it doesn't look like it is. Hmm. Here we go. Okay. So my streaming service is a little slow this morning. It just said offline for everything. And that concerned me a little bit. <laughs> um, hello. How are you? Uh, you can see me clearly. Good. How's the sound? Had a few issues with background sound and I think it's the, I've got a Blackmagic A10 Mini Pro and it gets hot, it has a thermal crackle and it has annoying noises built in which the basic Blackmagic did, didn't have so we might have to bite the bullet and switch back to the other one I think, I'm not sure. Um, okay, sounds good. So Monday mornings is social media news for Australia and globally and my name is Lowell Papworth. I'm Silk Charm Online. Might as well put the strap up as we've got one. And um, what I like to do on Mondays, besides arming and hourring a lot, <laughs> is check my tech setup for my Zooms, my webinars, my online training during the week, because I need to do a run through anyway. And then the second thing I do on Mondays is I catch up on social media news and I offer a Q&A session to you lovely people out there. I'm just making sure there are lovely people out there. There are. Wow, you've all come in. And we are currently streaming to my private group as well. So howdy. Um, I'm not sure if you leave me questions in the group if I see them on the live. So this is one of the things I like to test. I want to just try the sound. I don't think the sound's brilliant at the moment. Okay, so let me move into the news for the week. We're catching up on the news because if I don't do this now, I never get a chance to sit down and just see everything that's been happening in the last week. I'm going to use, or I have used a service called Smart Brief today alongside Feedly to bring in the latest news. I like to chop and change my original sources and my curated sources around on social media, on social media news, so I can stay up to date with lots of different um, services. It is still quiet, isn't it? We might just turn that one up a little bit. Okay, so I went into Feedly and Feedly is now allowing you to pull in Reddit feeds into Feedly. So the idea for me with Feedly is to have one dashboard, not just of comments to me, but how people are talking about an industry, how influencers are talking, how what sort of comments and engagement things are happening, what competitors are saying, uh, their blogs, their YouTube, their Facebook, their LinkedIn, their Twitters, their TikTok, anything I can get. My idea is I need to have a dashboard that I can just come in and use like a <clears throat> a newspaper, I guess, like my own little newspaper. It's vitamin drink with magnesium, which smells like poo. I don't know if you've ever had magnesium, but it smells like poo. <laughs> okay. Enough with the poo. So let's have a look at what's been going on. Uh, marketing dive. All of these guys, by the way, had popover interstitials on their sites, which Google specifically says, we will penalize sites that have popover interstitials, um, pop-ups, the ones that actually block the whole page. And how much do you trust a marketing marketing services that block content that Google will penalize anyway? I don't know who their SEO person is, but they need to get with the program. It's been at least three years since pop popovers have been penalized. I'm trying a invisible background, so you have to let me know what you think. Transparent green screen. 
Nearly half executives expect social marketing budgets, marketing, they shouldn't say marketing, budgets to double in three years, study finds. They should be doubling their social customer service. They probably mean doubling their ads. Is that what they mean? Sprout Social. So here's the thing. The Harris Poll conducted on behalf of Sprout Social, almost certainly they're asking people who are already using social media and using Sprout Social. And Sprout Social has a very specific clientele. I'm trying to get most of my clients off of Sprout Social. Hey, government. But um, they have a, a, a high dollar spend, not too much sense type of clientele in my personal professional opinion. Hikes in spending align with changing consumer needs. More willing to buy from a brand with po following a positive interaction. <laughs> That's why they need customer service on there. Yeah, there we go. Customer service, 61%. Sales, 67%. I've never seen customers line up in a store to speak to the marketing department. They want to speak to sales or they want to speak to customer service. Customer service needs to be front and center. Instagram and TikTok. Yeah, we know that. We know that. We know that. Well, I'd like to see these surveys drill down more L like um i got very excited 10 15 years ago when there was the statements that there's going to be more spend on um social media and it turned out to be boosting posts which is not necessarily of benefit to building community it's here buy this hey coupon and then when that doesn't work, it's, oh, I've got a competition. <laughs> Let's buy the attention with coupons and competitions. So I always have to be wary when I see an increase. Now, if the increase was in um, implementing gamification or implementing private communities online full of ambassadors or influencer programs that last more than five minutes so rather than let's put a bundle of goods together and send them off to an influencer and insist that they post about it we actually said we're going to have a three-year program of building out our influencers that I would be interested in the dollar spend on that's money well spent oh and hiring me <laughs> how are we going there good just checking FPS is 30. Is that good? Keyframe interview, interval two. Yeah, it looks like everything's channeling on through. People on Facebook having fun. <laughs> Next one. I will do some more research on this. Um, I often like to read the full paper. So I need to look at that. So we've got here, Twitter's integrating Nielsen products into video ad sales platform. Let me go in the top right. I think it's a better position for me on this site. Nielsen Media Impact and Nielsen Ad Intel. So this is, this is what the big data services from Nielsen. Twitter's ad platform, if you haven't been in there, Twitter's ad platform is massively lagging behind Facebook. Although, how much can we can trust Facebook? They have to be audited now by... Who is doing the audit? Deloitte's? Ernst & Young, someone. But they have to be audited because the analytics weren't reflecting truthiness. <laughs> um, and Twitter bought a data company and then 
I don't know if they implemented it, but it's always been much more basic than Facebook. And Facebook's Facebook's relationship with big data companies is complicated because they had to remove themselves from being the front end because of Cambridge Analytica. <gasps> I forgot to turn that thing off. Um, the strap. They shifted back the other way um, and they hid back in behind the scenes again and now third party tools have access to the data so it's not that the data is not available in big data it's just that the social platforms decided that they didn't want to stick their head above the parapet because it got shot at by arrows <laughs> so nielsen's and other big data companies are obviously tapping into the api still pulling all the data out and remember you signed up for it and said Yep, it's fine. And, um, yeah. TARS expediated cap capabilities. Twitter will now be able to m better monetize the incremental reach and frequency delivered by ads on their platform. It's the off-platform activity merging with the on that I'm always interested in, that intersection between you spent money on your credit card, what is it, sh you know, how can that be integrated into ads? Because the ads have to deliver somewhere. Just because you swipe to credit card doesn't mean an ad's going to suddenly pop up in front of you on a billboard. That at the moment probably can, but not at the moment. Um, so where will the ad appear? Because you bought a camera yesterday. Now you need a camera bag. Now you need lenses. Where will that ad appear? And so the integration of credit cards with social media is that interesting intersection for me also um, government data with these services is interesting so I'm wondering has Intel got a relation New sorry has Nielsen Media got a relationship with government let's google it this is what Mondays are for they're for us to have a look around Nielsen engages with government officials, industry associations and experts. We know that. Yeah, they do. You can't get without giving. So when... This is okay, by the way. It's the po it's when the Google specifically says if the popover blocks content. It's a bit big this one, but it's probably fine. So in order to target people better, you have to take Public Health England's data or hate Her Majesty's government data and integrate it into your chosen ad platform which basically means um, mapping data sets there's a lot of talk about whether stuff can be re-engineered uh, reverse engineered and it absolutely appears like it can be <laughs> but um, we won't go into that in this video in Australia we have Quantium and I know that our government uses quantum and the data ends up there in some way or another. Let's keep going. So Twitter's integrating Nielsen products into its ad platform, which is funny because I thought I saw TikTok was doing the same thing. Yeah, it only came out a few days ago. Nielsen and App Annie's analysis. Oh, do you use App Annie? That's the um, the service that, like Nielsen's, I guess, but it's checking for app usage because obviously it's not browser usage. 
Maybe I'm wrong. I thought TikTok had done the deal for Nielsen ads metrics or something. Hmm. I wonder if they've just pumped keywords in like Nielsen into here. It kind of looked like they had, hadn't it? I don't like it when they do keyword stuffing on the, yeah, they've done it in the, in the, they've gone into the HTML and put in Nielsen. So people searching for Nielsen will find their page. Oh no, it is there. Oh, so it's the image that's being marked. Brand lift studies. Oh, okay. I need to dig into that some more. I'm all, I love measurement. And those of you that have done courses with me and sessions with me know that I'm big on analytics and statistics. And I think I said in the last session, in God we trust, all others bring data. But I don't trust necessarily the metrics, the insights on Facebook and Instagram or the Twitter analytics or TikTok measurement or whatever. I also read the data research papers, the patents, and I ensure that I know where the data is coming from. There's a reason why Facebook, the courts told Facebook they had to be audited. I want to know truthiness behind the data as well. I download the spreadsheets for a start. I don't just look at the pretty little graphs that they have. I want to see everything else. Everything. Show me everything. <laughs> so TikTok's measurements section. <clears throat> TikTok for business. Um, I really thought that uh, Nielsen had um, worked with TikTok as well, but maybe they were talking about it. It didn't happen. I don't know. Next. Holocaust survivors use social media to fight anti-Semitism. So they created a hashtag called It Started With Words. Mm. How hate speech paved the way for mass murder. So they campaign content diaries six videos and a compilation were being released Thursday followed by one video one video per week so that's a short head of activity campaign and then with the EPG well not it's not an EPG is it it's only a simply a basic content calendar the posts include a link to a web page with more testimonials and teaching materials so the target audience is children, people who want to be educated, children probably, teaching materials. What was that fabulous campaign that, was it Spielberg did? And it was videos and... United States Holocaust Memorial Collections. If you get a chance, go there because they actually, um, they transcribed every video and you can search for keywords and go directly to that video and hear and see that story, which means if you're looking at historical records, family records, projects for schools and universities, you can find survivors who are in their 80s now, 90s, whatever. <laughs> um, back then, I can't, I, I can't remember how old they were, but they were in that sort of age group. And they recorded as many of them as possible in their stories. And so, and then that by transcribing them, which was pretty brilliant for the time I mean today there's so many transcription and automation and um, translation services automatically translation and semantic engines that that 
a function to help you find what you're looking for, even if you don't search for it correctly. There's a lot of that's today. But back when Spielberg put this together, it pushed this sort of area along a lot. So what we've got here, we've got never forget Holocaust Remembrance Day. Where am I? I'm up there in the right. And Holocaust Remembrance Day, it started with words. Let me just go into Twitter and see what's happening here. And Frank House. So this is an example of influencers. I get tired of people saying, oh, influencers, they just show off on Instagram and show their bellies. That's not what an influencer is. Showing their abs, not bellies. If it was me, it was my belly. You want to see my belly? <laughs> no. Um, if you think about influencers as being your extended network that already have a following or already have high impressions, engagement, that sort of thing, then it, it can be Anne Frank House. It can be Claims Conference. It can be... Who else is doing stuff here? Oh, uh, it can be a a congressman. The U.S. Holocaust Museum. Pen America. More politicians. It's pretty good, actually. Because of the amplification effect, if you can get people who have, you know, a seriously engaged community to reshare your content, then you may only have a thousand followers, but you'll reach potentially hundreds of thousands or millions of people. When you only do a direct channel conversation to the, preaching to the converted, I guess, it won't have the same impact as when other people pick it up and amplify it. It's, I called it the ripple effect back in, I don't know, 2000 or something, but today I think it's called the amplification effect. It might even have a different name. If you know what that name is, please let me know. Um, so that's an interesting campaign. I'm going to dig into that some more, particularly because I'm working in the edu social space at the moment. And um, edu social for me is using social media not for an entertainment voice, like here's some funny TikTok videos, and it's not for sort of buying attention with coupons, with competitions. I do think social media works in the edutainment and just straight out educational space and not this is how our new vacuum cleaners work or this is a walkthrough of the new car that we're selling. But that broader picture, you know, um, invoicing platforms can sure put some videos together on how to use their product and how to do invoicing. But imagine if they expanded that into content creation, not just promotions and did a how to run a small business type of edu social. So that's why I'm dedicating the next few Thursday, next series on Thursdays to edu social. So the, the last one was how to set up a course in one hour. That's on all my platforms. And then the next one um, on edu social, I'm going to dig into this. I want to really show how politics and causes and activism can, you know, use education to help people understand. And I don't mean I'm going to make you learn this stuff. It's the stuff that they want to learn. What else do we have here? And good on good on the It Started With Words campaign. Anytime you create a hashtag, you have to have a whole campaign around the hashtag. If you're not using the community's hashtags, you have to put a lot of work into this. And so they are they've got a content creation diary that starts with what was it six videos and then a video a week from then on so facebook tests hotline a q a product that's a mashup of clubhouse and instagram live the 
public beta testing. So it's not just audio only. They're almost at Google's help, help outs. Is that what it's called? Help meets, help outs. Google has this hilarious tendency to dump a product a couple of years before it goes massive, before the need for it goes massive. It doesn't say what it is. Wikipedia. Online collaboration, video, real-time help, and you could ask a question at any time. Launched in November. So what did it last for? 18 months. Payments were done through Google Wallet. So that was a paid-for service. This is what's interesting to me with Facebook, is we have these services that Facebook brings out, and then they don't look for a clip of the sale. So, have a guess how much Apple makes from Apple apps on the iPhone. I'm asking you to guess because I actually don't remember at all. Apple app store income revenue. $72 billion. Apple doesn't host the app. I don't know if you know that, but they don't have servers with all the apps sitting on them like little coat checks at the opera. <laughs> um, you have to create the, the company has to create the app, host the app, and all the app store does is offer a catalog so that when you click on the app, you know those times when it doesn't download? That's not the app store's fault. Well, probably not. It's usually... The company's server's gone down and therefore it's still showing up in the catalogue but it's not actually available at the moment. So I've always been interested in the clip of the sale model. Because it's transparent to... Uh, not transparent. It's the opposite of transparent. It's oblique to the user. They don't know how much the app company gets paid. And they don't know how much Apple is being paid. It's like quite a lot, isn't it? It's like 30% of the app store sales go to Apple. Um, it's one of the reasons why Kindle won't sell, Amazon won't sell on Apple. They don't want to pay that markup. But the user see, doesn't see this. And I was talking to some journalists last week and they had it in their head that users had to pay for, pay for stories, that there had to be a paywall. And to my mind, I've done quite a lot of work on revenue on social media. In fact, I wrote a book about it 10, 12 years ago now. There was like 30 different types of revenues for social media platforms. The clip of the sow is the most interesting one. It's the eBay model. eBay doesn't sell anything. eBay is just a catalog for people who are buying and selling. Amazon doesn't sell anything. They're just a catalog for people who are buying and selling. Yes, I know they've got warehouses today, but that idea that everything's in the long tail because you're not necessarily carrying inventory in a physical store. Uh, if Facebook takes a clip of the sale in Marketplace and then in groups, there's social learning groups, which are education. And so you could sign up for educational sessions in a Facebook group. I'd be interested in that because then I could run little courses inside Facebook. People wouldn't need to log into a special area. I wouldn't have to bother with taking the whole money thing. Facebook would take all that. Once the platform decides to invest in peer-to-peer -peer marketplaces, we have uh, solved the problem once for one person. You've solved it for millions of people, for instance, payment and wallets and Apple Pay and Google Wallet and whatever else. You make your money in the long town, not in the short head. So having 50 million people out of 1.6 billion trading, let's, I'm being conservative here, that's 50 million people. Even if they're only doing 100 bucks, you get a clip of that. That's a lot of millions. So... 
Um, what else is there? Escrow. You've got to put up escrow so that there's, you know, the PayPal model, both buyer and seller have to feel comfortable and confident. Have you been ripped off in a Facebook marketplace lately? I have, but I've always paid by PayPal. And if they ask for anything else, I just back out. Um, and I had to get my money back from PayPal. And apparently the woman was well known for doing this. And unfortunately, the Facebook group admin wouldn't put her out of the group that was the buy and sell group. So, And if you must know, it was in stationery and planners, planner diaries. My little hobby. Well, one of those things that I pick up and then drop and then don't do it again. Let's keep going. The stage is set for brands to jump on TikTok's influencer marketing boom. Sea shanties. Oh, that was Colbert's, um, S Stephen Colbert's late show thing was sea shanties. Baked Festa pasta. Makeup tutorial activism, particularly around the vegan stuff. I need to do a series on beauty influences because it's not well understood. And yes, we've done quite a lot of work in that space. Tracker, I think I'm on that one. I use quite a few different influencer platforms, but only because, um, ugh, no, I'm not downloading that. So they've actually linked to the data. That's a bit rude. They probably should have linked to Tracker and let them running their funnel and their lead generation collect email addresses and in exchange for the data. 50,000 beauty influencers. Yeah, all of the beauty influencers I've been researching are now on TikTok. It's the difference in voice. Instagram is about the be the best you. It's about be healthy, be wealthy, show off your best self. For instance, I put up a pavlova cake that I made because I can't cook, but I was so proud of it. I went, this is going to Instagram. Now, if it had been a pavlova fail, I probably would have put it on TikTok because TikTok is the opposite voice. It's um, mums being goofy. It's dancing in silly ways. It's um, having fun and basically not being your best self, but being your goofiest self. You can probably tell I like TikTok better. Always with influencers, check engagement, not subscriber numbers. Always check engagement. Oh, okay. Create a camp. So this is the same as, what are those YouTube hubs called? Or maybe it's hubs. YouTube has, um, so I, I just realized I was scrolling through and not showing you what I was scrolling through. YouTube has creator hubs in major cities. Sydney Hub, is it called Hub? Space, Spaces, or Hub. YouTube Space. Oh, they're running virtual events now. Cool. See, education, edu-social. Pop-ups, okay. So I know a lot of digital nomads lob up in these instead of co-working spaces, or they use both. Um, I've used quite a few co-working spaces, but I've not used the YouTube ones because I'm not in that category. Well, I suppose I don't know. I haven't looked into it. Okay, lucky last. This came out in May, and um, I... So I'm just checking. Yeah, I agree. <laughs> um, stay focused. In May. And then in 
I didn't start live streaming the news until June or July. It was obviously during the pandemic, but so I don't know that I caught you up on this or that I even, I think I saw it and it went straight in one ear out the other, in one eye out the other. So guides are focusing on recommendations, tips and other content from your favorite creators. But my understanding was it had to be health, well-being. First focusing guides on wellness content. It's almost like an app, isn't it? Um, what's that app where you can do exercise in 30 seconds or four minutes or something? You can tell I don't do that. See, I would be interested in this but not for but not wellness but I wouldn't mind doing guides for other things I don't have any wellness clients do I oh no to lie I do I'm not for profit in cancer and who else somebody else at the moment so I am reading and using the service the tech and I don't know does it say who can and can't do this no it's all well-being oh that's under community and safety oh, I thought it was going to be on the guides I'm not even paying attention check out more announcements about product and it looks like it's just come to an end Mm, no, it's just on Instagram. I will look into that some more. The more services I see that focus on education, the more interested I become in the future of social media. I've been on a bit of a down <laughs> for the last few years because it feels like every time I talk to someone, they're like, I don't want to know about, I don't want to talk to people. I don't want to engage. I just want, I just, just show me how to boost posts. Just show me how to um, play the subscriber game. I want more followers. I don't want to have to answer them. I don't want to have to invest in content versus promotion. I'm willing to spend a lot of money on ads to do interruptive advertising, but I'm not interested in getting engaged content so that it gets natively shared. And you know that, that can become a little bit soul destroying when you are at heart a community manager. And so the more I see an investment in, in educational marketing, the more interested I am. Of course, what happens with Instagram and Facebook and Twitter and LinkedIn, all the others, is that if you provide great content, great tips and great resources, um, you don't need to advertise. And while I truly believe that the algorithms work with high engagement first, I do think there is that issue that if you're too good, you won't need to pay for ads. In fact, we've had situations where we have more than 100% engagement, like subscriber to engagement, not reach, subscriber to engagement, more than 100%, and then boosting that has actually damaged. It suddenly it falls off a cliff. And it's almost as though the algorithm says, oh, the only time things get boosted is when they're really bad. And so therefore we'll drop organic off and we'll only show it to the boosted people. Um, and I guess if I was being taught and I was, you know, an algorithm and I was watching behaviors online, I would agree that <laughs> so many companies put a lot of money into boosting people, stuff the stuff that people don't want to see and they don't spend enough time boosting the stuff that people do want to see. I'm using boosted in a generic way here. I mean, if you want to say promote existing posts through the ads manager rather than the straight boosting, that's what I'm talking about, or even gray posting. But 
Anyway, I think that was everything I had on the list for today. And it's been 45, 40, 45 minutes. So just a reminder, social media news is on Monday mornings, 10.45 a.m. Sydney time. And um, Thursdays is the lecture series, so it's not as free-flowing as this. It's more of a structured lecture series. The first lecture series was on social media for government, local councils, senators, ministers of parliament. The second series, lecture series, was on social media for universities, colleges and higher education. We're now on the third series, which is not higher education. It's called EduSocial. And it's about how you can build out edu marketing for your products and services. So last week's was one hour on building how you can build an online course with all the funnels, payments, email lists and everything in one hour. And we've got four or five more videos to go on Thursdays on edu social and building out those kind of educational marketing funnels. Um, what's new with me? Not a great deal. I'm just trying to think if I bought any tech recently. No, I think everything's pretty stable. Oh, yes, I did. I picked up two light tripods from Facebook Marketplace and it was 30 bucks for the two. And I would have paid more than that on eBay, so I bought them. And the guy had had them in his garage for a while, but they were in good condition, so it was all good. I put my Loom Cube lights on them. Loom Cube is um, a diffused light, not the ring light, the little diffused lights that can do hair lights and things. So that's the tech. Uh, this week, a um, couple of Zoom sessions. Tomorrow, oh, I'm a bit nervous. We've got three people coming up to my training room to study private with me social media they're all from the same um, bubble they've they work together and actually there's two brothers and another lady that works with them and they're coming into the training room which is the first time since I was going to say the bushfires but no I ran some sessions in February last year but since COVID I've not been doing in-person training I've been focusing primarily on Zoom so that's going to be good I do like teaching I do love training I miss the lecture theatres I miss the conference centres I miss workshops with tables of people and I wander around and have quick chats with people you don't get the same feeling on Zoom I have been asked to do some Zooms in Asia through Singapore but it's six hours in one day of Zoom and I just think that that's a little bit too much if not for the students and for me I can do long form zooms and if you've heard me talk you know I know I don't know how to stop <laughs> um, but I don't know how effective that kind of training is it's pretty tricky in a classroom but one of the things I do in, in a classroom is I structure now we're in edgy social stuff but never mind I structure the strategy and then I talk through a story time like a case study or some uh, something that applies to the strategy I then show the tactical tools to physically do this stuff it's not enough to know the strategy and the stories you've got to be able to do it and then I give people a short exercise in groups in couples or singly depends on how I'm feeling and what's going on with the class and they have to kind of get their head wrapped around the strategy the case study and the tools to think how they would apply it. Because I don't want them walking out of the class going, oh, that was interesting, but I don't know how to apply that. I'm, I'm a dentist, that won't work for me. Or I'm a, I don't know, I, I'm a lawyer, that won't work for me. So they need to be able to apply it to their own stuff. And that sort of pacing works really well. On Zoom, it just feels weird to say, okay, I'm going to give you five minutes to fill out this sheet and then mute yourself and walk off and make a cup of tea and come back do you do that on zoom can people do that probably with a six hour session we could there are breaks built in so i may still do it i don't know because during the breaks i set exercises i'm just mean that way and then people have to get together in their groups during like at conferences they get together in their groups during morning and afternoon tea and they work on the exercises there is no rest for the wicked 
So anyway, just the trials and tribulations of being a social media expert, online community manager combined with trainer, adult education facilitator and whatever other titles you want to add to me. There you go. There's a title. Actually, it's a subtitle. <laughs> Turn that one off. All right. Waffling now. Um, this will be up on my blog with the links that I'm sh I've shown you today. Otherwise, it's available on YouTube, LinkedIn, Facebook, Silk Charm page, and also my community crew private group. And what did I say? YouTube. Oh, and Twitter, Periscope, maybe. Periscope is supposed to be turned off, but who knows? All right, guys, I'm going to have to love you and leave you. And here comes the countdown.